man, yeah, it was surreal just standing there like, man, that's Tom Brady, you know, talking to guys and and dapping guys up and stuff. Um, so to him, just to have respect for what I did today was pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. So you know, being a little kid, watching that guy kill it throughout all these years, win Super Bowls, and then to be able to just even, you know, give him a high five or whatever at the end, I thought it was pretty cool. Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. Happy Monday and welcome to the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. That was Brock Purdy on beating Tom Brady. I am Connor Rogers alongside Matthew Berry and Jay Croucher. Fellas, the Purdy party is officially underway in San Francisco. All right, so I'm going to make an, an, a request. A request of you, a request of America. And this is my request. Yes, Matthew. A new punt. Like, I get it. Purdy, Purdy, Purdy is close to pretty and everything like that. I'm asking us to dig a little deeper and come up with a better pun off of his name. I'm okay with the dad jokes. Make, make no mistake. I, I've made a pretty good living off of dad jokes. Like, that's, you know, half my shtick. I'm just saying, I've got can it. we aim a little higher? Yes, sir. I've got it. I'm okay. sure this, this has probably been said before, but Brock Nation. Brock Nation. All right. You like that? Yeah, a little. I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm man. better than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Nation. listen, I, like, you, you know, we're, we're a little bit past Brocktober. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's a, a, a Brocterfest. We got, we got to workshop this one. Yeah, we will. All right, that's fine. I'm just asking for better than – Brocktoberfest would have been amazing. Brocktoberfest, yeah. yeah. I'm just well, asking for, for – I'm yeah. just asking well, – I'm just it. requesting <laughs> as the, the 49ers continue this amazing run um, that we just – we aim higher than, you know, pretty, pretty good. Pretty, you know, in the yeah. Larry, Larry David – the Larry David meme and the whole thing. I'm just – like, I get it. We've all been there. That's fine. Let's move on. Let's aim higher. That's a request. He deserves it. He he's does. He's playing extraordinarily well. Dude. Even with a strained oblique, and that news is broken. That he's going to get an MRI on a strained oblique, but doesn't seem like too much concern around it. And he did it in the second quarter and played pretty well after that. But, I mean, Connor, the, we didn't see this guy in college, right? I think anyone did. Yeah. yeah, no, no one did. I mean, the 262nd pick in the draft. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't even think the Niners expected this. But it goes right. a long way when you have really you, good coaching. <laughs> And really good weapons. And Brock Purdy did make some big throws in this game. He, he really did. I mean, credit the 49ers, right? I mean, yes. like, I, you know, to Kyle Shanahan, um, uh, like, I think you can, you can make a um, case that maybe he's not the best at evaluating quarterbacks, you know, because he went all in on Trey Lance. That didn't work out. He wanted to get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo, only to be stuck with Garoppolo, and then Garoppolo saves his season. And then he's got to go with a uh, Mr. Irrelevant. But once he's got them in the system – he coaches them up. So, I mean, I thought they did a really nice job here. Like, we expected, you know, Tampa Bay to come in there and, and be competitive here, and they weren't, not at all. And Purdy made some big-time big, big time throws here. He also, you know, they schemed him open. Like, yes. the, 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 like Brendan Ayuk waited for, like, a 12 and a half minutes for the ball finally to get to him. <laughs> yes. He was wide open, and, like, on the, on the goal line, he's like, he had to come back, he had to wait, checked his watch. All right, is it here yet? Okay, it's finally didn't here. Didn't call fair catch. <laughs> didn't cut right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then walk to the end zone. But still, like, whatever. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, is like, you know, 16 of 22, 185, two touchdowns. He also gets a rushing touchdown here. He, uh, he was a little bit more mobile in the pocket than I think people expected, extending plays with his legs. And I think for our purposes, there's two questions here. One, would he be good enough to elevate the fantasy relevant players on this team that we care about, the McCaffreys, the Debos, the, the, the Kittles, the Iukes? And the answer is yes, 100%. The other question now becomes, after 18 fantasy points in his last two games, is he a viable streamer this week, especially against Seattle on the short week? Yep. I think there's two things with Brock Purdy. One, look, I think that what he's doing is unsustainable because he's doing it like his best moments are coming under pressure and also on third down on the key plays. Like he's doing amazing in high leverage spots. But when he's actually just kept clean or it's first or second down, he's not actually playing that well. So that you expect to regress. But the second thing is, I don't think it even matters because the defenses they're going to play, like are terrible. Matthew yeah. could put up 220 and three touchdowns against the Seattle defense. The Seattle defense is a car crash. Like, you it's know just, what? There's nothing there. Yeah, you meant that as an insult, but I'm taking it as a compliment. Yeah. Screw you. <laughs> Fire up the ball um, rifle. Yeah, exactly. The ball exactly. rifle. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The ball <bald laughs> rifle. It's exactly right. Um, oh the the ball pop gun, uh, basically, is, is what I am. Um, what are one of those things that, like, you know, you like, like, you have, a nerf? You, you know, no, no, no. Like, oh, the kids play with them. Like the paddle ball or yeah, whatever, something like mean. that. It's it was just something like, like, lacrosse, like, I'm, it's like a whatever. I'm like, the, I'm the bald Nerf gun or something <laughs> like that. Uh, you know, not necessarily the red rifle, the, but the, but yes, I mean here, their upcoming schedules, they play Seattle. That's the Thursday night game this week. Then they're home to my commanders. 
who have taken command Tough of the sixth matchup, spot. But at home for San Francisco, also off 10 days to prepare for that team. Factually correct. Then they're at Las Vegas, and for leagues that play into Week 18, they play the Cardinals at home as good as in Week gets. 18. That's a, that's a really good schedule here. Now, you mentioned this. Uh, I believe the NFL Network reporting that he has a, a strained oblique that he's going to get an MRI on today. We'll see. You know, it could be Josh Johnson time all of a sudden. In San Francisco, but let's move forward with the idea that Brock Purdy is going to stay. Look, there may be, it also may be one of those things, Jay, to your point, that the more tape people get on him, the more prepared they're going to be. 39% of his total fantasy points came in the first quarter. He had 111 yards in the touchdown. Um, and so, you know, as the game went on, they got a little bit more used to him. But look, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that I do think given the matchups and the weapons around him, I think he's a viable QB2 streamer. And certainly, for the purposes of all the other surrounding 49ers, all of them are going to maintain their fantasy value, especially, by the way, if Debo Samuel is going to miss time, which is what it looks like, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It sounds um, like a high ankle sprain, which would be the end of his fantasy season if you're rostering Debo. Definitely. And from a betting perspective, like Brock Purdy's 40-1 to 1 to an Offensive Rookie of the Year, and the reason why that's a bet is that it's Monday morning and we're leading the show with Brock Purdy. Like, it's an amazing story. If he goes <laughs> 6 and 0. Oh, and there's no one else inspiring in the field outside of Garrett Wilson. But if Garrett Wilson falls off, then, I don't know, Brock Purdy, 40-1, to 1, amazing story. Yeah, I, I don't mind throwing 10 bucks down on that or something like that. Just, a, you know, a, a little yeah. saw buck or something. You know, um, but because you're right, it, it was it's a great story, right? And the fact that there was so much hype, it, it was a late game, so a lot of people watched it. And the hype around Tom Brady returning to uh, to Northern California, where he grew up, second game ever there. And the fact that, you know, they won. And they won in, you know, very deciding, you know, a factor. Like, they were they were the better team, and it wasn't particularly close. No, was and by the way, team. Purdy was the better quarterback yesterday. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing. Like, he was, you know, he was better than Tom Brady yeah. in his first ever career start. Like, is something sort of insane. Go show your coaching matters. I, yeah. I mean, just outclassed on yeah. the other side. The Niners coaching staff. By, with Shanahan and D'Amico compared to where the Bucks are at right now. Yep. <coughs> Carl well, Shanahan, coach of the year as well, 35-1. to one. He should be the second favorite off the series. By the way, the other thing that also matters is, is offensive line play. I mean, Brady was under – you know what I mean? Like, yeah. court, the Niners have a great defensive line, but Brady couldn't get – you know I mean? Like, he – brutal. I Donovan mean, just Smith, absolute, not a ab good day. Yeah. Ab ab and by the way, uh, I believe it was Smith that had the holding penalty yep. that called back the one good play they had, the, the long uh, touchdown to Evans. Yep. Which, you know, so I, you know. Anyway, um, we should get into uh, we should get into Brady. We should get into the Buccaneers. It's worth noting that Brendan Ayuk at least eleven and a half fantasy points in seven of the last uh, eight games. If Debo is out, which we expect, um, you know, it says it's most likely a high ankle sprain. We'll get more information today. Yes, if it is a high ankle sprain, it looked really bad, and so they were like, oh, you know, it's it's not as bad as it looked initially, but probably most likely and we'll get word later today but most likely Debo Samuel to your point is done for the year at least the regular season as it relates to fantasy here um, and so my expectation here is that there would be better days ahead for and more targets to go around for Ayuk for George Kittle who had a tough day under 30 receiving yards and for the last five but I think he's still got to keep rolling Kittle out yeah you just got to keep he's a rolling. tight end yeah exactly and now Debo out that the, the target tree gets narrower and that was the concern just too many guys in an offense now you're not going to be throwing as much with Brock Purdy but with Debo out now it is really just Kittle McCaffrey Ayuk and there should be enough yeah with great matchups for McCaffrey down the road oh, as yeah. you highlighted yeah. Jay but looking at the Buck side of things guys I mean obviously we talked about Brady a miserable day for Brady and the trickle effect of that is not much going on for this wide receiver group as well and the backfield just split right down the middle in terms of fantasy production with Rashad White and Leonard Fournette right now and Fournette has been dealing with all kinds of different injuries all season long. Rashad White, as you see there on your screen, had the better day on the ground. 13 for 56 compared to just 4 for 13 for Uncle Lenny. Both guys get, uh, you know, usage in the passing game. 5 for 21 for White, 6 for 33 for Fournette, as you see it there on your screen. Fournette ran 10 more routes than Rashad White, which I guess there's a positive there. But it feels like if you're starting one of these guys going forward, and I don't know that you'd want to, especially next week where the buys are finally over. You're not in a scenario where you're where you have six teams on a buy, but I mean Fournette now has I mean sorry Rashad White now has double-digit fantasy points in four straight weeks, at least five receptions in three straight. His snaps continue to increase. He played 53% of the snaps compared with 41% last week, but there's just no confidence that you have in this offense 
and they play home to Cincinnati. Yep. Pretty good Bengals defense next week. Like this one's this one's tough sledding, especially next week, the first week of the fantasy playoffs. Yeah. Just another game as well where Tom Brady's over 50 pass attempts under 300 passing yards. Like it's just every single week. And with Rashad White and Leonard Fournette, yeah, you hope that one of them gets into the end zone, but this isn't an offense that ever scores touchdowns. Yeah. And the Bengals matchup is tough. Uh, then after that, at Arizona, that's easier. But then Carolina as well, which could be the last week of your season. Like Carolina, I think we're at the point now with the Panthers' defense where you just you just have to throw out that game against the Bengals, which was really weird for them. And they gave up five touchdowns to Joe Mixon. I think everyone on the team was sick or something. Yeah. If you throw that out, then that's a really good defense as well. So it's not it's not great for Tampa. Yeah, I mean, they shut down Seattle. I, I guess... To me, the only two questions, first off, I think Chris Godwin's the only guy that you feel confident starting on the Buccaneers going forward. And we'll, let's talk about Mike Evans in one second here, but I was just going to say that I feel like if you're in the fantasy playoffs, it's despite the presence of any Buccaneer on your team, not because of. Like, you've managed to get into the playoffs despite the fact that these guys have been inconsistent and are performing. I, I don't know what to do with Mike Evans. I, again, I think the narrative changes if that touchdown happens, right? I mean, it was wide open, great play, hits him in stride. It was holding on the other side. I don't think it really affected the play. Um, but he's now had under 60 receiving yards in five straight games. He hasn't been a top 30 wide receiver since week eight. You know, the touchdown, the touchdowns are fluky, but this is a guy that, you know, the first two years of Brady in, in, in Tampa Bay, he's had at least 13 touchdowns each of the first two years. And, you know, he, he, he can't get into the end zone this year. I mean, he's... He's wide receiver 47 this week, guys. Yeah. I'm, wow, really? <laughs> okay. Dark times. Wow. Uh, I think with Mike Evans, like, this is what he's on pace for at the moment. 1,053 receiving yards, four touchdowns, uh, 77 receptions. And here's the thing. There were just two players that went differently in his season. One, the touchdown yesterday where the holding panel didn't have anything to do with that blown coverage and him getting open for what? That would have been like a 60-yard touchdown. And then think back to when they played Carolina drop. and he drops the wide-open 60-yard bomb. Just add 120 yards and two touchdowns to his season and all of a sudden it's fine. It's like Mike Evans is a little bit below par, but he's fine. So I wouldn't give up on Mike Evans. And he's not going to have to play the San Francisco defense every week. But yeah, certainly it's very underwhelming. You do feel better about him against Cincinnati. Not a lot better, but you no, do. I mean, look, the Niners play, defense is playing as well as any defense in the NFL. Yep. Yeah, and that Cincinnati matchup with the way D.J. Reader and that Bengals front's playing, they shouldn't even try to run the ball with Fournette and White. They need no. to lean on Evans. They need to lean on Godwin. So if you're looking for a glass half full for Evans, Cincinnati should be the week that they have to force that nature. All right, let's move on here, guys, because we had an absolute shootout with the Lions taking care of business against the Vikings. A lot of people laughed when the Lions were favored yes. in this game. Uh, they weren't favored by enough, now. turns out. Yes, yeah. exactly. Line, right. line was wrong the other way. You're right. Look at that. Jared Goff. Jameson Williams. Jameson Williams, first career touchdown, officially healthy and back with his team. A huge speed element for an offense that has a good offensive line. They have three running backs that they're working into the system right now. Yeah, Obviously, Jackson, a lot so. of different targets on the field as well at wide receiver. But I think we start with Jared Goff here. 26.1 fantasy points, QB3 on the week. Jared Goff just continues to get it done. The last thing for the Lions, 25-plus points, five games in a row. They hadn't done that since the 1950s. Yeah, Connor, I was reading Peter King's Football Morning in America column, and he had Jared Goff on his MVP ballot. Like, in top ten, he's like ninth or something. But still, that goes to show. Jared Goff was completely discarded. Everyone thought that this season would be to gear up to draft Bryce Young or CJ Stroud. Yeah. And no, Jared Goff, he's been playing at a higher level than Kirk Cousins, who he beat. By the way... He's also in the conversation. It's weird. He's in the conversation for comeback player of the year, and yeah. he's in the conversation for MVP as well. Like, if he leads the lines, if they if they run the table, and here's, their schedule is not easy. I mean, well, at least it's actually it's actually not bad after this week. They play the Jets. They're at the Jets That's this tough. week, right? That's a tough one. At Carolina, which is a better defense than they get credit for. It's the middle of the pack. Home to Chicago at Green Bay. That's nice. Right. That, that, well, Green Bay is, you know, but that's, again, that's January in Lambeau. I, you know, so, I mean, again, we've talked about how good Jared Goff has been at home. Three of his next four are on the road. So that'll be a big test for Jared Goff. And that's sort of my point here is, is that it's a great story. And, you know, Jared Goff was a top eight quarterback for me. He was on the love list this week. We talked about him a lot on fantasy football pregame as a guy that be, should be a must start. And he, he paid off 330 yards, three touchdowns, 27 of 39. He's now had 37 or more pass attempts in three straight. He's fourth in the NFL in pass attempts over the last three weeks, which is great. But I don't know that you – like, he's probably going to make the hate list this week on, on the road at the Jets. Like, you don't I, – I think if you've been riding Jared Goff, and I have been in a couple leagues, I think it's, you're going to be hard-pressed to see this level of success 
given the upcoming schedule. Yeah, I think the best sign for Jared Goff, if you have Jared Goff on your team, is that they were winning this game basically the entire time, and he still got up 39 pass attempts. Like, they were comfortable putting the game in his hands, even when they had a lead. They were extremely aggressive with their play calling, which was a credit to Dan Campbell, and they were able to salt the game away. But the fact that, look, I mean, they just had a lot of the ball. They just ran a lot of plays, 39 pass attempts and 30 carries. We'll see what it looks like in the wind going up against Source Gardner and DJ Reed and co. But certainly you have to feel pretty good about Jared Goff and he can perform in tough matchups. But uh, what, where I was going to say is just finishing my, my thoughts. Sorry, I was all over the place there. But if he lead, if they run the table here yeah. and he leads the Lions into the playoffs, I mean, like, I think he's in the MVP. You know, I mean, the MVP is basically a quarterback-driven award. And yeah. it's probably going to be Mahomes or Jalen Hurts, yep. but I bet you he's he could be he, on some ballots. He's gonna he's some gonna get some votes. votes. Comeback player of the year becomes much more yes. realistic in that scenario, Absolutely. especially when you look at the Seahawks schedule that Geno Smith, the front runner for the award, will be facing. One other thing here, guys. I mean, how many times do you see four wide receivers on the same team reach double digit fantasy points in a week? That's just not very common. Yeah, and you know it's weird. And so for a game in which there was so much scoring on both sides of the ball, right? I mean, you know, it was thirty four twenty three that they won. I mean, and, and there was a, there was a tweet, uh, that I saw in the, uh, the fantasy life newsletter this morning. Um, and, uh, I, f I forget who, who, uh, who, who tweeted it. So I apologize, but it, so it wasn't mine, but just basically in a game in which you had all this scoring, right? I mean, you, you had 57 points scored. There were no touchdowns for Deandre Swift, for Jamal Williams, who, who leads the NFL in touchdowns for Amon Ross St. Brown, for TJ Hawkinson, for Justin Jefferson. I mean, you know I mean? Like, it was, uh, you know, it was crazy that so many complimentary players ended up getting involved here. Let's talk about Shark. I mean, Jamison Williams' story just because he's Jamison Williams, but he caught one ball for 40 yard, one yards. It was the touchdown. He was wide open. He's not on playing a, great, a lot. Yeah, I mean, you're not, you're not he, he's played under 20% of yeah. the snaps in both games since returning. You're not starting Jamison Williams. You like stashing him in case that role continues to increase. And Josh Reynolds, you know, whatever, five for 51, a touchdown. For me, Shark was the interesting one. He's now had six targets and over 90 yards in back-to-back -back games. He's playing 85% of the snaps, guys. He's got two receiving touchdowns in three games. And just the touchdown was a really nice play. Yep. Promising, probably more promising for next year in terms of fantasy relevance, but great to see from Jameson Williams. And just before we move off this game, just to tie the knot on the MVP discussion, on BetMGM, Jalen Hurts now the clear favorite for MVP, minus 165. Patrick Mahomes is plus 200. Uh, probably like Mahomes. At to me, the odds. big story of this game, I mean, because what if Justin Jefferson did what Justin Jefferson does, he just dominated. Adam Thielen uh, was viable, as we talked about. Um, and, you know, Adam Thielen also on the love list this week. But the running backs. Dalvin Cook, 15 for 23. He bails you out with a touchdown, so you're okay there. And then the running backs on, on Detroit was truly, to your point, a three-headed monster. We thought, okay, finally, it's DeAndre Swift time. He also made the love list. That was wrong. Um, that was a bad call here. He had less rushing attempts than Jamal Williams. I, I mean, you have to be you know, somewhat nervous here, right? I mean, Jamal Williams, 16 for 37. DeAndre Swift, 6 for 21. Neither guy particularly effective on the ground, but... Jamal Williams getting basically three times the amount of carries that DeAndre Swift does. Uh, Justin Jackson, four for 19, and he also cashes in the touchdown. I, I mean, you know, Swift caught three balls. He got four targets. But okay, nine, I mean, nine touches to 16 for Jamal Williams? Like, Yeah, they don't feature reversal. They reversal of the yeah. last week as well. So I don't really know what to do I, with that situation. I, as great as the story of the Lions is, I feel like um, – I feel like Amon Ross St. Brown is the only guy you feel comfortable starting next week against the Jets. And I guess maybe Jamal Williams just because he is touchdown dependent, but like 60, you know, even, you know, he's, if he's getting 15 touches in a game, then you feel he's got a shot at a touchdown. Yeah. But there's no rhyme or reason to it because last week they were playing with the lead the whole time as well and DeAndre Swift was the guy. So I'm not sure if they're riding the hot hand, but Jamal Williams' hand wasn't particularly hot. He went 16 for 37. So I don't know what they're doing there. It, yeah. it, it is... It is, hopefully we get more clarity there. I mean, maybe Swift was a little bit banged up. I know he popped up in the injury report a little bit this week, but it seemed like he was fine. I, I don't know. But my point is, is that as great as the offense of the Lions looked forward to, again, I'd be really nervous. We'll talk about more about the that Jets matchup later in the week. But just, anyway, it was, uh, it was great to see the passing attack uh, working on all cylinders here. 
a much different game, an ugly game. Ravens Steelers here. Um, obviously, the battle of backup quarterbacks. It felt like with Trubisky having to come in, Kenny Pickett gets knocked out with a concussion. J.K. Dobbins actually gets featured in this game, guys. 15 rush attempts, over 100 yards, and the touchdown. Gus Edwards involved as well. And just a true AFC North grinded out ugly game. Yeah. I mean, J.K. Dobbins is a story, but like he didn't look healthy at all. Like he's limping through that run. I don't know what Rumbling there. is the nicest way to put yeah, it. Yeah, he looked like he had nothing left. He's dragging his legs. So, right. I mean, that was the thing. Like he goes 15 for 120 and a touchdown, so he can't complain, but at the same time, it doesn't really bode well. I I thought he looked better as the game went on. You know, I mean, he definitely ran out of gas on that one, and it's his first game back. I, to me, I'm encouraged by the usage. Again, 15 for 120, you mentioned the 44-yard run, but, you know, you compare that with 13 for 66, and Gus Edwards here, as you see it there on your screen, Kenyon Drake not really a factor at all. Um, so, feels like, I, at least for me, especially next week when they're on the road at Cleveland, which is a, a team that has really struggled this year against the run, you feel pretty good about Dobbins moving forward. Certainly, we went into this game saying, let's see what happens. We're not really sure how this backfield is going to break down. And clearly, it was clear that they want Dobbins to be the guy. Yeah, and the good news is that America can cut Kenyon Drake. And yeah, from <laughs> finally. Drake. And yeah. feel good about it. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know what you do with the quarterback position. We'll see. Harbaugh on Ty, uh, Tyler Huntley's health after the game said, quote, he seems good to me. He's reciting the months of the year backwards. Can you do that right now? So we'll see. He's currently in the concussion protocol. Is that how you get out of concussion <laughs> protocol? Yeah. That's interesting. Yes. I, is that really that hard? I, could I do that? What? Go. Do it. Start with December. Yeah, December. Don't give him a framework. No, no. Yeah. The, the, yeah <laughs> thanks for the hint. <laughs> December, November, October, September, August, July, June, May, April, March, February, January. Bit of a hesitation there no between concussion uh, protocol. June and May. I always me, get so May and play. April a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I always get that Not a little bit. Same. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I took a step. Yeah. I read my read my blockers okay. and then, you know, went yeah. through the hole. You can play. Uh, I appreciate that. Excellent. Um, to me, the big story here is... I mean, we can talk – the quarterbacks, we'll see how that plays out. Um, I'm not really worried about Huntley. Again, tough road tough road game on the road at Pittsburgh is what it is. What I am concerned about a little bit is Mark Andrews. I mean, he, his last six games, guys. He's not right. 43.1 fantasy points in his last six games. I mean, 43.1. Even Evan Ingram had 39.2 <laughs> in this week alone. Evan like, Ingram. I, don't get me started on Evan Ingram. We'll <laughs> talk about that in a second. But he's had single-digit fantasy points now in five of the last six games. And we thought, oh, Mark Andrews will be fine. I don't know, guys. I mean, like, if, if there's a positive here, it's that Andrews had a 35% target share in this game. The negative is, is they only attempted 17 passes. 35% of 17 yeah. passes ain't a lot. It, it works out to, you know, two for 17, which is what Andrews had. Uh, they do play the Browns, as we mentioned, so maybe better days are ahead. I don't know there's a fantasy takeaway other than you have to keep rolling him out there because he's Mark Andrews, and what else are you going to do? Yeah, I think it's a kind of different version of the George Kittle situation where it's like, well, Brock Purdy, you call, like, is this going to be submarine George Kittle? It's like, yeah, maybe, but what are you going to do? You're going to bench George Kittle? No, you're going to bench Mark Andrews so you can play Foster Moreau? Like, no, you're going to exactly. keep playing right. more Mark I mean, Evan Ingram came out of nowhere, Yeah. right? And he'll go anywhere. Yeah, I think that's the issue. And you're looking at a Baltimore team that ran the ball, I think, 42 times in this game. And when you look at what's on the horizon, they go to Cleveland, an interior defense that doesn't scare you at all. They might do the same thing again. So right. It doesn't really give you a lot of confidence going forward no. for Mark And Andrews. then they're home to Atlanta. Then they're home to Pittsburgh yeah. in, in the championship game. So, you know, we'll have more clarity by that time. But uh, anyway, the, first, the next two weeks, certainly you feel better about their prospects offensively given the matchups. Yep, and I think the Dobbins and Edwards are both going to be startable against the Browns, I would expect. Yeah, I think that's fair. On the Steelers' side of things, you know, not a lot working for this offense. Kenny Pickett leaves the game in the first quarter with the concussion. Trubisky comes in, throws the ball to the other team over and over again, as we <laughs> come to expect <laughs> yeah. with Trubisky. Yeah. Sorry, Mitch. There was, there was another – again, I apologize. I, I don't know who sent the tweet, but I saw this one scrolling through, and somebody said there's there's been only – I haven't fact-checked this either. It's Twitter. You know what you're going to do. But uh, he said basically there's only two games this entire year – only two games this entire year – where a quarterback has come in for another quarterback and then thrown three touchdowns, three interceptions. It was, uh, it was like week four Jets, right? when, yeah. when Pickett came in <laughs> for Trubisky yeah. and then, right, and then Trubisky uh, the coming drawers. in for, uh, for Pickett. So, yeah. 
two sides of the same coin, right? Very bad. Nothing yeah. really to extract from the Pittsburgh box score outside of Deontay Johnson. Had a decent game, 6 for 82, 8 Still targets. Still no touchdowns. Still no touchdowns. Most targets oh, yeah. without but a touchdown. But you know what? He, no, had, he had, had a couple of end zone looks. Yeah. He, he had did. a couple of end yes. zone looks. I, I was, Trubisky sailed. Oh, uh, <laughs> I was, I was, it drove me crazy because a buddy of mine texted me pregame and said Deontay Johnson or uh, DJ Shark. And I went, ah. I got to say Deontay Johnson, just he's been getting yeah, all the targets yeah. and just, you know, I, I just think he's a better player than Shark. It's close. I have them ranked within three or four spots, but, you know, I don't feel good about it, but I'm probably going Johnson over Shark. And then, of course, Shark catches the long touchdown. And I'm just like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah. And then I won't finish that sentence. But, <laughs> like, you know, like I just – anyway. It is what it so is. So I was just like, please, Deontay Johnson, catch a touchdown, please, you know. And George, he got more targets, got more receptions, did not get in the end zone the way Shark did. George Pickens just continues his kind of role as the Robbie Anderson prototype. Better version of like current day Robbie Anderson, but still, it's just boom or bust. He needs to be catching 40 yarders to provide value. And it's three for 78 from George Pickens. You'll take that, but not, not someone who can be relied on. Yeah, by the way, I mean, in the, uh, you know, the Steelers, Najee Harris doesn't do much on the, on the, uh, on the, uh, on the ground. He does cash in with a touchdown. He's like, whatever. He's, Najee Harris is like an RB2 yeah. these days. He's, you know, he's got some value, uh, better than he, he did in the middle of the season, but still not what you draft him to be. They're at Carolina next week. Staying in the AFC North, the Bengals take care of business against the Browns. Browns offense not much working there. The Bengals side of things, it feels like everything's going for them right now. They did deal with some injuries. Let's start in the backfield. We talked about last week, guys, when Joe Mixon returns, is Samaji P. Ryan completely faded out? And I think, Jay, we got the clear answer here that P. Ryan's not going anywhere. Yeah, well, he gets the touchdown. He does only have four carries versus Mixon gets the bulk of the work. Uh, and it was Mixon's first game back. So you expect that it'll be clearly his backfield going forward. But yeah, Matthew, not happy about the P. Ryan. It's so annoying. Also. I mean, look, whatever. I had Mixon I had Mixon in one of my da daily fantasy Shaking lineups as well. And I, I mean, just absolutely drives me crazy because right over, like last week when when p ryan was going crazy you know what i mean like and we needed him to get into the end zone chris evans has one touch but gets into the end zone and so now mixon who got 16 touches in this game compared with uh five for samaj p ryan but of course p ryan gets the touchdown mixon got him down there just like you're like ah. yesterday was a, an incredibly frustrating fantasy day it was incredibly frustrating. Frustrating. a lot of vultures a lot of vultures a lot of random touchdowns a lot of stars not doing what they should have done, a lot of underperformers, a lot of randos having big <laughs> fantasy games that randos. they shouldn't have happened. You know, like Trent Irwin you in know, the end zone? Well, 258. What? Trent Irwin, he didn't uh, enjoy that yeah, touchdown? No, I, exactly. I, I mean, think I, I saw you rage tweet about Deontay Foreman getting vultured, too. Oh, you I mean, it was like, everywhere. Yeah, Deontay Foreman got vultured by, by uh, not only Chuba Hubbard, but Blackshear. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> what has this guy got to do? What has Deontay Foreman got to do? Carolina. He played well too. Steve yeah. Wilkes. Well, look at my look. Stuff. Go ahead. Like, show. The, so I'm in a dynasty league. I'm in a dynasty league playoff, right? And so here you go. So that's me. Hand over the case, Stark. Mm, uh, named after out. my uh, my my one line in uh, Avengers Endgame, right? And so there's that's this is my dynasty league team. Twelve team half point PPR dynasty league team playoffs. So I've been building this team, as you can, as you can see. Look, and you see at the top. Decades. Look, I, Cooper <laughs> Cup is like at, at the very bottom yeah, there in the bench. I, I lost Cooper Cup. I don't have Rondell Moore. So there you go. McCaffrey, Foreman doesn't get in. Gabe Davis does nothing there. I have Bam Knight. Travis Homer didn't do anything. You see, I, but look at who I played against. Some guy, this guy, Ed, my buddy Ed, stupid Ed, starts Evan Ingram, Zay Jones, Brock Purdy. Yeah. He exactly. shouldn't have had to start any of those guys. 72 points from those three guys. Evan Ingram, Evan Ingram went from tight end 15 on the season to tight end four. Yeah. Shout out to Mike Clay for that. Same amount of points I, as like, Justin Jefferson. I mean, like, and he got a he got a BS touchdown from J uh, Cam Akers on Thursday night. He shouldn't have gotten to that. <laughs> well, whatever. Waddle had a bad game, but still, I mean, look at. Are you kidding me, Deontay Ford? My team is so much better than that other guy's team. <laughs> It is. Objectively, it's a better team. Okay. He had to start Brock Purdy, <laughs> Jay. Well. And, and and I need Hopkins and Murray to go off tonight. Or, well, you know, I had Aaron Jones on a bye as well on that team. So, I get Aaron Jones back next week. But but still. I didn't realize you were in Avengers Endgame. That's actually news yeah. to me. So yeah, um, I yeah. try to keep That's it on the DL. <laughs> yeah, you don't really talk about it. Yeah, that I know, much. I know. Very humble. But, I mean, come on. Like, the, the only thing more annoying 
The only thing more annoying in fantasy football, correct mm. me if I'm wrong, guys, the only thing more annoying in fantasy football, when, you know, you're, when a star doesn't get a touchdown and some rando gets it, <laughs> the only thing more annoying than that is when somebody stupidly starts that rando against you. You know what I mean? Like, like oh, no Christian Kirk, it's going to go to Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram's having a monster game? Come on. And then you're like, well, at least no one's starting Evan Ingram. Oh, wait, this guy did? Against me? 33 points? Champion- Are you kidding me? Championships aren't won on paper, Matthew. That's why they play the games. Yep. That's why they play the games. Well, those Brooklyn Nets I have a better have team and I'm going to lose. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? Like, it's a two-week playoff at least, thank God, but still. <laughs> but now you understand, yes, I was rage tweeting about Deontay Foreman, who is the best running back on the Carolina Panthers. Yep. By a good margin. Yeah, by the way. No touch. I mean, I have Chuba Hubbard on my bench in that league. I have him as a backup to Foreman, and I don't, like, Run I didn't even consider starting him. Yeah. And obviously I should have. Like, I mean, like. Played well, Chuba. Good game from Chuba. Number three on the most annoying list, to your point, is injuries and warm-ups. And in this game, uh, obviously T. Higgins oh, God. aggravates his bad. hamstring injury this and warm-ups. Zach Taylor says, there was no sense in ruling him out. I didn't see any reason to do that. <laughs> How about yeah. us? How about caring about us? How about the long-term health of T- Zach Taylor drives me crazy. Yeah. He's a bit infuriating, Zach Taylor, yes. for a guy that made the Super Bowl. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's kinda, incredibly infuriating. Usually pretty conservative. I didn't so see he's any reason with to do that. It's an all-timer, he's by like, the way. He's, uh, like rich man's, he's like rich man's Nathaniel Hackett. No, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's excessive. He made the Super Bowl last that's year. That's what I'm saying. He's rich man's four. Nathaniel Hackett. He's, <laughs> like, rich, like he's, he's, is, he's clearly good. He clearly is, a, you know, he can clearly coach, right? It's like Bill right? Gates is Nathaniel Hackett. He's a like very wealthy man, Nathaniel Hackett. Yeah, I'm just, I'm very, I'm just, I'm just. But they went I'm, from 4-11 and 11 to the Super Bowl. No, I 4 11 and 1. Yeah, a thousand percent. The 9-4. and four. No, I understand. He's a good coach. What's the fourth best but, he, he, but he drives me crazy with stuff like this. Okay. He's infuriating. The way Nathaniel Hackett's infuriating. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm just, like, we're not, a, the guy obviously can coach. Like, he, he you know. Matthew's just upset. Yes, I'm upset. Zach Taylor and Nathaniel Hackett. I'm upset. He's throwing Yes, because he's, bullets. because Samaj P. Ren's getting random touchdowns. Because, like, well, yeah. Trent Irwin. Trent Irwin. <laughs> <laughs> Dial up the flea flicker Good to catch Trent Irwin. Four targets for Trent Taylor as well. Michael Wilcox, a couple targets. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, what are we doing? What are we? What are we doing? Oh, what are we boy. doing? Well, <laughs> like, I'm, I mean. <laughs> Because, I mean, like, because, listen, I, I don't claim to be able to tell the future, right? I don't. I don't claim to tell the You've future. You've never right? made that claim. No, I've never made that claim, right? And so, like, it's fantasy football and weird stuff's going to happen. But you know what? We spend so much time, like, not, not like me crunching the numbers and do the research and, and calling contacts and, and looking, at, looking at film, and you guys do as well, and our team, our team of producers and researchers here at NBC. And, by the way, everyone listening and watching this, we all do it. Like, we're, we're reading the news reports. We're watching stuff. We're, we're listening. We're we're tinkering with our lineups. We're thinking. We're we're you know we're really studying everything and trying to make informed decisions. And sometimes the ball isn't going to bounce our way. But like at least at least give us the information. And the fact of the matter is, is that if you knew that T Higgins had <laughs> tweaked himself in the pregame and uh, you know that the hamstring was bothering him, then you won't start him. But no, I don't see any reason to you know mention it. Says Zach Taylor. I don't see any reason to pull him. I don't. Yeah, like, well, he told someone because the line moved one and a half points off of the T Higgins thing. Got so out someone there. knew. Somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Collusion. Oh, Collusion. my goodness. Yep. Zach, T- Zach Taylor was playing against T Higgins in his fantasy league. I that's believe what Zach I believe Taylor that's... actually had Trent Irwin. Yeah, yeah that's, what yeah, that's what I think. That's, that's, that's what I uh, think I'm going to have. All right, so let's try to actually do some fantasy advice off of this. I don't know that there's a takeaway here. You know what I mean? Like, other than Jamar Chase is awesome, Joe Burrow is awesome. They play Tampa Bay next week. I. It is Mixon's backfield. Piran gets the annoying touchdown, but it is clearly Mixon's backfield here. We will see what happens later in the week if, if Higgins' injury is serious, if Tyler Boyd, who also left this game uh, with a dislocated finger, if that's serious. So perhaps Trent Irwin shows up on uh, our waiver wire show tomorrow. We'll see. But um, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> probably <laughs> Maybe. Not. Well, we might bring him up to dismiss. Him. I mean, yeah, Tampa's secondary looks like fish food right now. So a good matchup Brutal. for Cincinnati coming up here. Yep. Uh, quickly though on the Jamal Browns. They went out there. Yeah. Quickly on the Browns side of things, two performers that matter. Donovan Peoples-Jones ends up with eight catches over 100 yards. David Njoku, but really nothing going for the Browns backfield. Deshaun Watson, since he's taken over, not looking good. The weird Jacoby Brissett, throw him in there to throw the ball on fourth down. 
There's a lot wrong with the Browns offense right now. I think with Cleveland, like the one thing at least is like Deshaun looked like an NFL quarterback. Again, like he looked a lot better than he did against Houston. Still didn't look great, but at least he ran the ball too, six for 33. But yeah, this isn't, I don't know why Cleveland can't run the ball anymore either since they came out of their bye. Like Nick Chubb can't apparently rush efficiently. Very strange situation all around. I have a weird theory on Donovan Peoples-Jones. 13 fantasy points now in four of the last five games. He played 100% of the snaps for the first time in his career. He had five deep targets. That's the most uh, That's the most deep targets by a Brown wide receiver this season. The five deep targets that Watson threw all went to DPJ. And so could Donovan Peoples-Jones be his Will Fuller? If you remember, yeah. like, I mean, like, I mean, yeah. with, if, if you put, a, I mean, like, problem. just simplifying it here, but, like, if you put Amari Cooper into the Hopkins role and you think about how Watson was in Houston, could DPJ be – kind of a Cleveland version of Will Fuller in this offense. Yeah, I think that's a good call. And you don't be worried about Amari Cooper, who uh, has done nothing for two weeks. In a he row. was on the injury report. He wasn't 100%. Like, he played a lot of snaps, so he was out there. Like, Seven and they, there was a couple of There was a couple of mi- a, a bunch of close misses there. Like, I'm not worried about Amari Cooper. Hopefully he gets healthy. They do play the Ravens at home next week. Um, so, yeah, and Njoku, you know, listen, great to see Njoku back to being, like, you know, a, a locked-in top 10 fantasy tight end. Played 90% of the snaps. You know, he looked like David Njoku. I mean, yep. we ranked him inside the top ten. He finishes a he finishes the number two tight end heading into Monday night. So yeah, good. It, that Watson was good enough to at least keep Njoku afloat. Yep. Last game on our open here. Bills get the win over the Jets, but an ugly fantasy day for Buffalo, a Buffalo team that people rely on like no other. Josh Allen, he has not had a good season against the Jets in both games, but I think Stephon Diggs is the big surprising one here with the lack of production. Yeah, I mean, got sauced. He, he did get he did and get saw sauced. And, and, and by the way, and, and Josh Allen didn't play well in this particular game. You know, 147 passing yards. He bails you out with his rushing. Sure. He gets a rushing touchdown and the 47 yards on the ground. Um, for as explosive as this Bills offense is, I think it's actually very simple. Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, like that's all yes. you can trust moving forward. I mean, they they play the Dolphins this week at home. Then they're at Chicago, and maybe we rethink it, like after we see what happens against that. But like, and then you know, at Cincinnati, home to New England in Week 18. But I, I just, I don't think you can trust Gabe Davis. You can't trust this running game at all. Like Isaiah McKenzie's like, it, they're a bunch of nice complimentary players to Josh Allen. But fantasy wise, for as explosive as this offense is normally, like. The only guys you can start with any confidence are Allen and Diggs. Just a bad day at the office for Stefan Diggs. I'm not worried about it. Yep. James Cook does nothing, nothing. as well and after really we involved. had high it's expectations. Bigger thing. I yeah, think Singletary the, got more work. The most heartwarming is way too aggressive, but the best thing about it is that Dawson Knox at least showed some signs of life, and obviously anyone who shows signs of life at the tight end position has to be Rosson probably started four for 41, touchdown, seven targets for Dawson Knox. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, like he's a he's a touchdown dependent tight end. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like he's in he's add him to the long list. But uh, like, if you're playing a Bills player that isn't named Josh Allen or Stephon Diggs going forward, it's just like yep. good luck. Yep. Good luck. Last thing in this one, as the Jets' upcoming schedule is the Lions, Jacksonville, and then Seattle. If you have Bam Knight in the playoffs Beautiful. right now, I mean, Michael I Carter not that. only not involved, he has the fumble that ultimately uh, probably cost the Jets any chance of winning the game at the end. Oh, Jets. This is Bam Knight's backfield yeah. for the rest of the year. Yeah, welcome on the Bam Wagon. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, Jay a little late. There. I'm a little yeah. late. Jay and I have been there for ye- weeks <laughs> yeah, now, but you're welcome Some, on. It's about time. Yes. It's about time, Connor. I know. Um, I missed it. Uh, just holding they, on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hanging on. By the way, you want to talk about a schedule, though. Home to Detroit, home to Jacksonville, at Seattle at Miami not one run defense that scares you to your point about Bam Knight 17 for 71 he also catches two balls for six yards 19 touches it's his third straight game with at least 17 touches he's averaging 15.3 fantasy points per game in the three games he's played and he played 47 percent of the snaps Carter played 50 percent but to your point wasn't involved Bam Knight yeah. looked like the better running back didn't cost them the game yes, uh, but you know what I mean like and so um the only question here on Bam Knight is whether, and it feels like they do, they're going to trust him if they have to move up the quarterback situation. Connor, why don't you delve into that a little bit real quickly? Yeah, I think it's going to come down to Bam Knight getting more touches to protect Mike White. Mike White did make it back with the team. He had to go to the hospital after the game, but he made it back with the team. So I'm assuming he's going to play this week. And then it's going to be Bam's backfield. James Robinson not active. Ty Johnson not involved. 
Sure, Carter had 50% of the snaps. He's not getting the ball. And when he did get the ball, he fumbled. Yeah. So it's it's Bam all the way. Yeah. Just before we go to break, I'm not sure there's a big difference between Bam Knight and the other running back in New York at the moment, Saquon Barkley. I think that's pretty close between Bam's those guys, healthy. honestly. That's the difference. Because of the schedule. Yeah, yeah especially yeah. because of the schedule as well. Worth noting, Elijah Moore, 10 targets, 6 catches. Played, he's now played 75% of the snaps over the last two weeks as well. Corey Davis leaves this game early. We'll talk more about Elijah Moore tomorrow on the waiver wire show, but just notable there, I thought, uh, especially given given their schedule, Detroit, Jacksonville, Seattle next three, and the fact that uh, the fact that you know should be a more narrow target tree. Yeah, Corey Davis for the Jets. concussion protocol. Yes, exactly. So we'll see where that goes for more. More on that this week. We're going to take our first break. When we're back, breaking down the weekend Warriors. Excellent run here for Trevor Lawrence, whose breakout season is officially underway. He finishes 30 for 42, 368 passing yards, three total touchdowns, guys. Tre so, it took a little while to get going, yeah. but the Trevor Lawrence breakout is officially here. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, he, he's, he's been great. Um, you know, super annoying because he's sitting on my bench. <laughs> Sitting on my bed, oh, like oh, the, the, the yeah, the dynasty league that I was talking about earlier. Like no, I was up Trevor Lawrence. Now I started Jared Goff and uh, Kyler Murray over him. I feel good about that process. Yeah, that's fine. Trevor Lawrence had missed much of the week in practice. He got an limited practice on Friday. So you're like, ah, if he's going to be 100, percent you don't know. You expect a low-scoring game against the Tennessee Titans. And what does he do? He comes out and just absolutely crushes. He's the number one quarterback heading into Monday night for fantasy in week number 14. 33.4 fantasy points for you. I just, I mean, it's just unbelievable. He's now had 20 fantasy points in three of the last four. He's completed over 7% of his passes in four of the past five. He's seventh among quarterbacks in pass attempts. You saw it on the, he's getting a little bit of points with his legs as well, as you see it there on the, um, in terms of the rushing touchdown that we let off the segment with. And here's Evan Ingram. <laughs> Don't even get me started. Evan, like it should, no. That should have been all Christian Kirk. Is that Travis Kelsey out there? I mean, we want to celebrate, you know, and I'm I'm bitter. I'm a bitter berry. I'm absolutely a bitter berry. <laughs> I'm a bitter berry. But you don't understand I am. Third person. <laughs> I'm a bitter berry. Oh, you're at the top of the there board. Wow, By a good doubled, margin. Doubled everyone else and then some. At least Chig is there. Right. That was good. Yeah. Chig Okonkwo, who uh, was my bold prediction on Fantasy Football pregame, is a top 10 fantasy tight end. He's That's going to come true. He finishes. He's his tight end three heading in to Monday Night Football. But Evan Ingram, it's his best fantasy game of his career. Not just this year. <laughs> of his career. It's been around a while as well, Evan Ingram. Back-to-back -back games with seven targets and a touchdown. He's third among tight ends in routes run this season. Tied for fourth in receptions again. We talked about this. Again, shout out to Mike Clay, who pointed this out. Heading into the game, he was the 15th best tight end on fantasy. And now he's the fourth best in terms of total points for the season because he just had such a ridiculously monster game against me yeah. with no reason whatsoever. He shouldn't have been started. That's the so annoying thing. It's like a, it's a dumb start. Yeah. And yet, you know, somebody did start him against me in this deep, crazy deep. Don't understand the swagger was at all. Watch them get blown out by Dallas and beat the Jets. Who knows what they'll do. You just never know what to expect with them anymore. Uh, but an impressive – look, I, let's try to – my bitterness aside, let's try to move this forward. I will say – Look, uh, you know, w I, this game played out how we – a lot of times games don't play out how we expected, but this game played out exactly how we thought, which is that they're going to struggle to run ball. You know, we didn't think ETN would, would have a lot of success against that Tennessee front. He did not. 17 for 32, you like the usage there. Had Lawrence just handed it off and he catches in the touchdown, maybe you forget about it here. But we thought it would be a heavy passing game here. Christian Kirk's only gets seven targets, but Zay Jones is a thing, guys. Eight for 77 and a touchdown – for Zay Jones, he continues to be productive and get like double digit targets every single week in a passing offense that's pretty good. Good for Doug Peterson, the anti Urban Meyer. <laughs> good yeah. year for Doug. Yeah, no, it's been well, a good. Okay, it's yeah. starting to trend the right way, and that Titans secondary. When you consider the awful. mess that he inherited, yeah. that Urban Meyer, the dumpster fire that Urban Meyer it's left. It's not a one year fix. No. They can no, still win I, the division. They, they, and they, they, can <laughs> they still. control their, don't they control their destiny? They, if they need win? some help, but okay. they, if they beat Tennessee, they're in a good spot the second time. Mm. Another strange one here, Russell Wilson and Jerry Judy. Russell Wilson does leave the game in the fourth quarter, but before that, 23-36, uh, 247 yards, three touchdowns. He even got the run game going at over 50 yards on four rush attempts. I think the big talking point here, guys, though, is Jerry Judy catching three touchdowns, the best fantasy game of his career. 24% target share since week six. We thought Judy would have a good game. I think the word we used was a little bit un was uninspiring, though, yes. because we the touchdowns just haven't been there for Jerry Judy. He inspired. And he inspired, you know, by far the best fantasy game of his career. 
And what was exciting was that all three of his touchdowns came in the red zone. Um, you know, we thought we thought there would be a shootout here against Kansas City that they'd have to throw to keep up with them. That came true. We thought that, you know, with you know, Cortland Sutton, Judy would get a he heavy target share. That came true. We didn't expect three touchdowns, but still, eight for 73, really impressive. Um, two, of his, uh, two of his three end zone targets came inside the 10-yard line as well. I'm sorry, red zone targets came inside the 10-yard line. Uh, this, was a, this was a positive step forward, and I think you feel good about him against Arizona, even if it's Brett Rippon under center, even if uh, Cortland Sutton, uh, you know, especially if Cortland Sutton doesn't come back. Yep, great game from Russell Wilson as well, uh, which we quickly touched on, 247 passing yards, running it as well, three touchdowns, and then, of course, as soon as something good happens, he gets concussed. But Jarek McKinnon on the Kansas City side, he was the biggest story where he goes 7-1-12 for for right now. receiving. Uh, it's unbelievable, and that's just what happens when you play Patrick Mahomes. You get some random massive touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, look, the the the, the whatever the the crazy play where he like he sort of knuckle ball underhand knuckle balls it, you know, yeah. like and McKinnon just catches it and is off to the races. That's that's fluky. As you, here's the play, as you you watch it right here. Here's Mahomes just running around. Let me try to make something happen. He's stiffing arm and then just like <laughs> just flips it. I mean, this is just ridiculous. It's from strip and, sack to like the right. play. And, and heads up for McKinnon for being there, making the catch and just getting to the end zone here. <laughs> um, it's just, I mean, it's just a ridiculous play. Like you run out of adjectives to describe Mahomes. What I will say though about McKinnon, this is a fluky play. Obviously, he ha he has, however, had double-digit fantasy points now in four of the past six. He's had back-to-back -back games with double-digit touches. He is the passing down back on a passing up on a pass-first offense that likes to throw the ball. It, like, and it's really with Ceh on the shelf. It is really it is Pacheco and McKinnon, and I do think McKinnon is a viable flex especially next week against Houston. Look at their schedule, by the way. Houston, Seattle, Denver again, and then at Las Vegas. Like, the Chiefs' schedule is really nice for their defense, for all of their position players. Yep, and they're just going to continue to, I think, McKinnon particularly. Patrick Mahomes, I mean, he's just going to continue to produce and accumulate stats, and a lot of time it's going to go to the running back, and McKinnon's clearly the guy in the past. But I, do, I think people might be willing to write it off. Oh, it's a, you know, it was a fluky play, no, but I, no, no, he's been, he's been solid. Yeah. He's, been, he's very much a viable flex in PPR leagues. Yep. The last one here, we've talked about it, it was a weekend of random production. Yeah. Chris Moore. <laughs> Chris Moore has 10 catches on 11 targets. I mean, this was only his second career game with more than 70 receiving yards, Barry. No Nico Collins, no Brandon Cooks in a game in which the Texans give them credit. Yes. They were very competitive with the Cowboys. Honestly, they should have won. Yeah, they pushed they it. Should, they absolutely they absolutely should have punched it in. They should have punched it in and at least, you know, at least kick a field goal there. Like Rex Burkhead, like, what are you doing? I, I, I would have cut Rex Burkhead. He runs the wrong way. They call a timeout, you know, for the fourth and one goal play, and then he still runs the wrong way. I, it's been but anyway, kind of year for the, the fact of the matter is, is that Brandon Cooks has missed a couple of weeks. Nico Collins, if he doesn't come back, look, they play the Chiefs next week. Again, we talk about this. Teams have to throw against the Chiefs. 18 and a half fantasy points in the two games where he's played more than 70% of the snaps. If Nico Collins and Brandon Cooks are out again, he should play again uh, more than 70% of the snaps. does seem like he has a connection with, uh, with um, uh, Davis Mills and Jeff Driscoll. Whoever's, <laughs> I mean, like. Doesn't matter. Houston, Can't keep him down. I, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. But that was that was sort of interesting. Only other random guy. We talked about Chuba Hubbard a little bit there. I still prefer Deontay Foreman in that backfield. Yep. I, it was a nice game here. He's now had back-to-back -back games with 17 touches. They do want to go run heavy in Carolina, but they play the Steelers this week. I can't imagine, you know, in a week in which there's no teams on a bye, Hubbard's nothing more than sort of a desperation flex. But it's a team that's running well. I'll give them credit there. We're going to break when we're back. Look on the other side of things. It's Sunday Scaries from the weekend. Good, Note to Saquon Barkley. Good music too. 6.8 fantasy points on the day. He came in with, um, you know, the neck. The designation on the injury report was neck related, and. I mean, the usage was not there, guys, overall. Dable is claiming it was more game script than injury, but you have to be concerned for Barkley for the rest of the year. They right, got Jay? their butts kicked. I mean, it was game script somewhat. I mean, I think it was everything. Yeah, I mean, they've gotten their butts kicked before, though, and he still gets carries. I mean, he just disappeared from the game entirely, and you're not, you're not feeling good about the run of matchups either. They play against the Commanders. He did nothing, really, against Washington when they played a week ago. Right. And then it's the Vikings who have a halfway decent run defense and bottled up the Lions' yes. rushing attack. Then it's Indianapolis and then Philadelphia. Like, you're not feeling good about Saquon. I, would you rather have Bam Knight at this point than Saquon? 
Yeah, yeah. Right, I mean, it's close. Yeah, it's it, the fact that it's a conversation tells you everything you need to need to know about that one uh, a, as well. It's just um, absolutely crazy here on uh, on Saquon Barkley. He's now had under 40 rushing yards in three of the last four. He's had one one game with more than 20 receiving yards since week seven. Um, played 31 percent of the snaps. He had 11 touches in this game. Yeah, I mean, it's like you don't feel good about it, but it it's one of those things. It's like, what do you do about it? Like in terms of like, if you have Barkley, like unless you like, you'll see where he comes into the rankings, you know, and that kind of stuff, uh, you know, and we'll dial down. But yeah, you don't feel good about him against the commanders. No. I don't know that there's anything to do about it other than like lower, lower expectations significantly. You hope better days are ahead and hope he gets healthy. But I will say that he when you think about the schedule and the usage and the, the lack of production recently, if you do, if you did pick up a BAM night, if you do have viable options, then you might consider benching him moving forward. I don't, it's weird to say, right? Just the chance of a touchdown and the receiving work just raises his floor though. So you probably, right. You're probably still starting him, but it's just like, just, yeah. As you, as you calculate sort of your lineups, like lower expectations, lower projections on him. There was once hope Sam Darnold could maybe get something out of DJ Moore's fantasy season right now. <laughs> DJ Moore yesterday, nope. guys, no catches. No catches. Not a goose egg because he got the ball. He got two handoffs, but no catches for DJ Moore. Yeah, I mean, it was just the game. Like, they were leading the entire time. They got up 17 nothing in a hurry, and they were like, well, we're not going to put this game in Sam Darnold's hands. We're going to give it to the running backs. And they were running so efficiently. And uh, the Seattle run defense is just atrocious. Like, yeah, CMC might break records on Thursday night, honestly. That Seattle run defense is a mess at the moment. And so DJ Moore, he suffered from that because they weren't going to throw, and they weren't going to throw to him. So not much you can take out of it. I mean, and that, that's the point, right? It's just the running, right? Carolina now has at least 45 rushing attempts in three of their last four games. They just, they're, they're running so effectively. They're using Foreman. They're using Hubbard. They want to just run and run and run and not let uh, Sam Darnold, you know, throw a ton. They want to, they're trying to protect him a little bit. Like, they feel like they have a decent defense here. Steve Wilkes, their interim head coach, obviously comes from the def defensive side of the ball. And so, hey, we're going to play conservative and we're going to grind out wins, which is what's been happening here uh, for Carolina. Credit the Panthers under Steve Wilkes. I mean, he's had under 30 receiving yards in five of the past six. 42% guys of his receiving yards this year have come in two games. He had less receiving yards on Sunday than Panay Sewell. Yeah. I mean, he did. Panay Sewell caught one ball for seven yards, and that's more than DJ Moore To be Moore fair, did. we did predict that on Fantasy Football. Program, <laughs> yeah, we Panay did. Was yeah, exactly. Off. I mean, there you go. As you see it there on your screen, uh, so uh, Panay Sewell, the, uh, the, the offensive tackle for the Detroit Lions, caught, had one target, caught one ball for, I'm sorry, for nine yards. DJ Moore, three targets, zero receptions, zero <laughs> receiving yards. So, yes, you'd have been better off starting Panay Sewell at wide receiver than DJ Moore. Last one here, the Dolphins offense on Sunday Night Football. The Dolphins offense, whether it's Tua, the backfield, Waddle, and then to cap it all off, Tyreek Hill now dealing with an injury. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the tough one, right? But Tyreek Hill, so hopefully he's he's healthy and we'll see. We'll track that story as the week goes on. Short he week. still had a big week. Yeah, Saturday. You know, I mean, like, had the heads-up play, he gets the touchdown. Um, different sites are scoring that differently. Usually usually what it is is a, it's a you don't get the, the points for the yardage. It's like it's basically like recovering a fumble in the end zone. Um, but you do get the six points for the touchdown here. To me, the, the bigger story here is, you know, Tua was awful. Jalen Waddle was awful. I mean, I was on football night in America in front of whatever, 12 million people saying, I think Tua's going to have a monster game. And I was wrong, wrong, wrong. Like, give me the big L on Tua. He looked awful. And Brandon Staley provided people, along with the Niners the week before, but provided defenses, hey, this is how you play the Dolphins. You, you, you play press coverage up on them. You, you disrupt their routes. Jalen Waddle was bad. And now they're playing at Buffalo. Do you feel good about any Buffalo Bill on the road? Any dolphin? A dolphin at the at the Bills? Yep, Tyreek Hill. That's it. We'll we'll talk about that more throughout the week. But when we're back, it's time for last call. We're looking at Monday Night Football props from our friends at BetMGM. All right, these are the most bet props for Monday Night Football right here. You see the top of the board, guys. DeAndre Hopkins to score the first touchdown and also to score anytime touchdown is actually minus money right now. And then James Conner, under 
61 and a half rushing yards. Jay, anything you're fading the public on? No, not particularly there. My best bet tonight is Mac Jones over 226 and a half passing yards. Last time in a dome against a bad defense, he went for 382 against Minnesota. Two quick ones for you here. Kyler Murray over 35 and a half rushing yards. Ramon J. Stevenson over 33 and a half receiving yards. Barry, what do you got? Cardinals have allowed a league high nine touchdowns to tight ends this season. So give me a Hunter Henry anytime touchdown. Use promo code Barry at betmgm.com. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Peace out till tomorrow. Hey, it's Matthew Barry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the, you know, autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.